एवरी वन आई एम सानिका ए के ए सैको दीदी एंड वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल एज प्रोमिस्ड दैट वंस वी रीच वन थाउजेंड सब्सक्राइबर्स आई विल ब्रिंग यू अ वीडियो ऑफ बायोलॉजिकल साइकोलॉजी सो आई हैव प्लान एन एंटायर सीरीज ऑफ बायोलॉजिकल साइकोलॉजी एज आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू एंड दिस सीरीज विल कंसिस्ट ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑन स्ट्रक्चर एंड फंक्शन ऑफ न्यूरोन um then i have already talked a little about neurotransmitters but uh, through the explanation of functions of neurons you will understand better how neurotransmitters work then obviously our central nervous system peripheral nervous system uh, the parts of brain the functions of brain and a little about our spinal cord as well so just stay tuned and there is a lot of educational content coming on the way in this week and the next week uh, so let us start with basic structure of neuron guys i think you can observe that the background of this video has changed and it will be so for the next 2 3 months because my college has started offline and i have shifted to another place and there might be a little background noise as well but there won't be any decline in the quality of my explanation and i guess that is the most important thing so i'm sure that you will enjoy this video if you think that these videos are helping you with your psychology entrance exam preparation please consider subscribing to my channel also like this video and share it with your psychology friends and now without further delay let's get started let us first understand the characteristics of neuron so neurons basically are uh, famous for conduction and transmission of information um their speciality is that they take any type of stimulus and make it into an electrical impulse like a current and then they send it to the brain because that is how brain understands it what kind of stimulus do they take they take sensory stimulus so if we feel anything in our body touch or sound or anything then they take it they send it to our brain then our brain gives some instruction to various neurons uh, to tell our body to behave in a certain way so they send back information also so their major work is reception conduction and transmission of information from our body to the brain and from the brain to the body okay now let us understand the structure of neuron so you have to keep this in mind there are basically more than 12 billion neurons in our body right now and they come in various shape and sizes so various parts of neuron can differ in how they look and their chemical composition and everything but there is a basic structure that every neuron follows it's like humans only we look very different we are unique but we have body parts that are same in every every human so like that um i guess we all have learned since our 8 9 10 standard that there are four things that every neuron has uh, there is soma that is neuron cell body then there are dendrites that is the tentacles on the cell body which attach to another neuron then there is axon uh, the big pipe type structure and then there are terminal buds um the tentacles at the axon which attach to dendrites okay i will explain more in detail but these four things soma dendrites axon and terminal buds sorry terminal buttons they are called terminal buttons sorry uh, so these four things are clear a neuron has soma that is cell body it has dendrites it has an axon and then it has terminal buttons okay now let us understand this in detail what is soma as i said it is a cell body <laughs> just to give you a vision uh, soma is a that big thing that comes before axon axon is that big pipe before that a star shaped body comes in neuron that is soma um i am going to attach a picture of neuron in front of you please look at it and then i'll explain further so this big shaped star shaped thing is soma it has the nucleus that means it has genetic material it has most of the things that determine how the neuron will look what the neuron will do and what is the neuron's responsibility 
it also has most of the machinery which will determine the processes of the cell what the cell will do and everything i explained that already so this is basic this is soma okay um soma only has tentacles which are attached to it on the upside so if this is like big soma then it has tentacles like hair of soma okay uh, so these tentacles are called dendrites dendrites is basically a greek word so dendrites is plural dendron is the singular word in greek it means tree and dendrites are really tree like structure they are the receiving ends of the entire neuron so another neuron is sending information dendrites receive it and then it sends the information to the new neuron uh, these dendrites have a special receptor like structure uh, on its end which takes the electrochemical or biochemical impulses that come from another neuron i will explain how that structure works how one neuron uh, uh, sends information to another neuron but just remember that dendrite dendrite are the receiving ends of the first neuron the neuron that we are talking about this is the neuron that we are talking about this is another neuron and this is next neuron okay just imagine our imaginary skills will also improve like this so yeah so dendrites takes information from its receptors special receptors it transfers it through soma soma transfers it to axon axon transfers it to terminal buttons and then next okay so dendrites is that then axon axon is that long tube that is attached to our soma so that tube is not a basic tube which is plain it is a um, do you remember those balloons that used to come in childhood um they were folded and every means the cartoon balloons they had a part and then another part and then another part then another part they were folded and twisted like that so that balloon was a long tube but it had parts in it like that if you don't remember then imagine now that axon is a tube it has a part then another part then another part then another part i have showed in the picture already so it looks like that and that part which has a bulgy thing on it now that is called myelin sheath now what does this myelin sheath do it increases the speed of information transmission in the neuron i'm not giving any trick for this myelin sheath we have been listening too many times in 10th 11th that myelin sheath is responsible for uh, fast transmission of information but there is one more thing that you need to remember uh, this different parts of axon so there is axon uh, then on that there are like this sheets of myelin sheath and they are not uniform everywhere they are bulging at some point then there are a node like structure then again there is a bulging portion of myelin sheath then again node like structure um, just like the twisted part of the balloon that node like structure is called nodes of ranvier okay uh, just imagine that uh, ranveer singh he always comes in between always does something which catches attention of everyone uh, wear some nice clothes or some weird fashion and then he comes in between just like that ranveer nodes they come in between of the axon okay they are node like structure just for remembrance sake guys uh, the tricks that i am telling you they will be very weird but more weird they are better you will remember trust me so it's okay <laughs> now i told you about the nodes what about the bulging part that is called axon hillock and the information is great, of greatest intensity over there it passes from hillock to hillock to hillock to hillock it doesn't pass through so that information doesn't pass through the entire tube straight it passes from one axon hillock to another axon hillock to another axon hillock to another axon hillock so yeah so basically that is the place where the most information is there um and this information is called action potential so one action potential is actually getting passed and then once it passes the entire axon then it goes into axon terminals so uh, at the end of the axon there are small small uh, 
so the size of axon decreases and small small again tree like dendrite like structure is only there uh, again tree like structure is there which is Uh, called axon terminal it is the ending portion of axon so axon terminals they have a special function as well so what they do they connect with another axon but they do not connect by touch so they are not uh, with each other they have a space in between there is this let's just shift our big axon this side a little bit so that axon terminal is here now this is one line of the axon terminal it has a terminal button over here okay and so this is terminal button this is our receptor of another dendrite new axon dendrite this is our receptor so the space over here this space that exists between every neuron and this space is called synapse this is where our electrical impulse which is in form of action potential it becomes a chemical and that chemical which gets secreted from axon terminal to new receptor is called neurotransmitter okay again let's revise dendrites receptor neurotransmitter comes in form of electrical impulse to axon uh, to cell body uh, cell body is the main big part of the neuron which has nucleus genetic material everything then it comes to axon axon has myelin sheath the bulge is called axon hillock the nodes are called nodes of ranvir because ranvir always comes in between because of his weird dressing sense uh, he gathers attention that is why he comes in between and nodes of ranvir also come in between so they are called nodes of ranvir then action potential passes on to the nodes and then it goes to axon terminal axon terminal has terminal buttons terminal buttons uh, and new receptor has a space in between that is called synapse so here electrical impulse becomes chemical again that is called neurotransmitter the neurotransmitter binds on the receptor and passes on to the new neuron okay ha huh. this neuron is just half of the story to know how a neuron really works is by understanding what supports the neuron to work we say now if we want to become successful we need support of many people there is a team behind us who support us our family our friends and then somehow we become successful exactly like that a neuron is the hero but there are so many cells which support the neuron and then that is how the neuron is able to get the information and transmit the information in the correct speed the correct way in the correct intensity everything so what are these supporting cells called these supporting cells are called the glial cells now glial cells are of many types but let us first understand what these glial cells exactly do what are the functions of glial cells there are three major function of glial cells the first one is the glial cells hold the neuron in place if the neuron is here then if there is empty space around it then it can go anywhere and then there will be a problem in the structure of our body so the glial cells make sure that the neuron is here only by being around the neuron then the second function is the glial cells insulate the neuron Uh, i was telling you na myelin sheath is there on every axon that glial cells make i will tell you which exactly cell makes but the myelin sheath is made by glial cells this insulated neuron make sure that the message is transmitted really fast and the message doesn't get scrambled here and there all the intensity of the message is not decreased so all that is ensured by glial cells uh then the third function of glial cells is if one neuron or many neurons die due to brain injury then glial cells act as uh the cleaners who eat that neuron and then destroy it degenerate it completely lymphocytes are the part of the cell that does the same work in our body it eats up all dirty material that we don't need and it just destroys it okay so glial cells also do that Now let us understand which various type of glial cells are there. The first type of glial cells are astrocytes. Now from astro uh, we can remember asterix. How does asterix look? It looks like star, right? So 
Astrocytes are also star shaped. Oh, chuck it. From astro, we can remember astrology and it is study of stars and planets. So, astrocytes are star shaped glial cells. Okay. Function of this glial cell is pretty easy as I have told already. It holds the neuron in place. So, um, it makes sure that the neuron doesn't move anywhere. Uh, it also makes sure that uh, at the space of synapse. So, if this is this is the terminal bud, this is a receptor. Here, it provides enough space for the synapse uh, for neurotransmitter to pass on to the receptor. But it also binds enough space so that neurotransmitter doesn't go here and there. So that it passes on exactly to the receptor. Okay. One type of this astrocyte are phagocytes. These phagocytes do the work of eating. They are big foodies and what they do is they just eat. So they eat all the dead neurons. They um, don't leave anything behind. If anything is not usable, if the neurons are dead, if there is injury, if there is anything like that, they just clean that space up. So if you have a brain injury, okay, and a lot of neurons are dead, then the phagocytes will just multiply in number, they will divide and work, they will eat up all the neurons, and then the uh, empty space, they will fill it up with a wall of phagocyte because they don't want more empty space or else more fluid will accumulate and there will be different problem in the brain. So this empty space, when it is filled by a special kind of astrocyte, this special kind of astrocyte, it is called scar tissue. Okay, because there no neurons exist there, only the astrocytes exist. Okay, astrocyte, type of astrocyte is phagocyte. Astrocyte holds the neuron in place. Phagocyte eats up the neuron. One more function of astrocytes is that it balances the level of fluid in our brain. So if our brain needs more fluid, it produces more fluid. If our brain already has a lot of fluid, it takes up the fluid. So it just maintains the equilibrium of the fluid in our brain. Okay, cerebrospinal fluid. You can call it CSF. And the fourth function is that it provides nourishment to the neurons. Neurons can cannot take nourishment by itself. The astrocytes take up new nourishment from the capillaries and then they transfer it to neuron and they just don't keep transferring they transfer it whenever they think it is necessary for the neuron to take nourishment our mom thinks it is necessary for us to eat some fruits she cuts the fruits brings it to us same work astrocytes do they think they are like parents of the neuron if they don't think some neurons are necessary they will just eat them up if they think nourishment is necessary they will bring food they take care of the neuron okay so astrocytes and their subtype is phagocytes. Then the second type of glial cell is oligodendrocyte. Okay, from dendro only we can just connect it to dendrite and now we will understand it has something to do with the structure and shape of neuron. Okay, so yes, exactly like that oligodendrocyte are responsible for making myelin sheath in central nervous system, neurons of central nervous system. So these myelin sheath, as I said, they are um, not continuous. They are not continuously wrapped around the tube of axon. They are wrapped at some part, then some part it doesn't have myelin sheath at all. That is called node, node of Ranvir. <laughs> then again some part it has myelin sheath, again some part it doesn't have. So um, this myelin sheath, how does it get formed? These oligodendrocytes are of a weird kind of shape, okay? So this shape is paddle-like. So this paddle, this flat paddle, it is wrapped around axon. Huh? So oligodendrocyte is here, then its paddle-shaped process is here and then it wraps around axon. Another paddle wraps, another paddle, another paddle. So this paddle-like structure is your myelin sheath then there is gap, node of Ranvir, then again myelin sheath, then again gap, then again myelin sheath. So each paddle becomes a segment of that myelin sheath. Myelin sheath, you have to remember, is 80% made up of lipid and 20% made up of protein. And important thing is oligodendrocyte makes myelin sheath only in central nervous system. The third type of glial cell is called microglia. Okay, 
these are small 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 glasses very small glasses their work is also like phagocytes they eat up any dead neuron and they also make sure that any microorganism doesn't invade the brain so they are like wbc of the body um, for the brain so you can remember it like that and one more fun fact if brain damage occurs then your head will get inflamed brain will also get inflamed so this inflammatory reaction is the responsibility of microglia now apart from glial cells there are another type of supporting cells which are called schwann cells these cells work in peripheral nervous system their work is same as oligodendrocyte dendrocyte myelin sheath right what we said myelin sheath is made by oligodendrocyte in central nervous system the schwann cells make myelin sheath for neurons in peripheral nervous system the only difference is that oligodendrocyte have this protruding paddle like structure which is grabbed on the axon to make myelin sheath but schwann cells do not partially make myelin sheath they completely wrap themselves around the axon so that myelin sheath can be made they work in similar way just in peripheral nervous system and they completely involve themselves in making myelin sheath oligodendrocyte are like no i will give myself partially or partially i want freedom okay <laughs> yeah so basically that's the work of schwann cell uh, so we have completed the structure of neuron then the structure and function of supporting cells now we have to see our types of neuron so there are basically three types of neurons the first one are sensory neurons sensory neurons as you have already guessed that they come they are uh, on our body parts various body parts uh, and whenever we feel something a touch or voice or taste or anything then these sensory neurons get activated they feel the sense and they then send it to our brain or spinal cord if it is a reflex action then they send it to spinal cord but then eventually it is registered by brain and then the second type of neuron motor neuron if our brain wants to give some kind of instruction to our body to move in a certain way to get out of that situation or to get in that situation then motor neurons are used our brain gives instruction and then motor neurons pass it to our muscles and then our muscles work accordingly okay there are two type of motor neurons there are lower motor neurons and then there are upper motor neurons lower motor neurons work is uh, to get passed from spinal cord to our muscle our smooth muscles and upper motor neurons work is to pass information from our brain to our spinal cord okay so sensory neurons send the information motor neurons send back the information and now the third type of neuron are interneurons now all the neurons that send the information to the brain are not sensory neurons the neurons that sense the information on the body so if i touch touched my hand then my brain now knows that i have touched my hand how does the brain know by sensory neuron the sensory neuron has sensed that information but now that sensory neuron is passing the information to interneuron and then it is going to the brain okay so all the work in between of sending the information to one interneuron to another interneuron and then to brain and taking the information from one motor neuron to interneuron to another interneuron this relay work is done by interneuron okay we also have to important one very important point that sensory neuron take the information up and they are also called as afferent neurons and motor neurons send the information down and they are called as efferent neurons so sending down is exiting information is exiting so you can remember it like this efferent e exit e so efferent exits okay uh, now what we have learned let's just recap fast uh, there are three types of neurons sensory neuron it senses the sense and sends information to the brain motor neuron it um, sends the information of the brain to the muscles and interneuron does the work of relaying the information in between okay 
मोटर न्यूरोन्स आर ऑफ टू टाइप लोअर मोटर न्यूरोन अपर मोटर न्यूरोन लोअर मोटर न्यूरोन फ्रॉम स्पाइनल कॉर्ड टू स्मूथ मसल्स अपर मोटर न्यूरोन्स फ्रॉम ब्रेन टू स्पाइनल कॉर्ड एंड इंटर न्यूरोन दे जस्ट डू द रिले वर्क सेंसरी न्यूरोन ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज एफरेंट न्यूरोन्स मोटर न्यूरोन ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज इफरेंट न्यूरोन्स यू विल रिमेंबर दैट बोथ बाय अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट इफरेंट एग्जिट्स सो ई ई ओके we have done the structure of neurons we have done the structure and function of supporting cells we have done type of neurons and now in our next video we will do the function of neurons functions of neurons is a big topic so i haven't covered it in this video but i hope this video was informational to you uh, guys if you think that this work is really hard and i am being consistent with my videos please 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 subscribe to my channel um that gives me motivation to keep on making videos uh, so that i can help a lot of psychology buffs out there uh, and uh, keep studying keep watching my videos and i will see you in my next video bye bye